Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we're moving away from histology and back to do a bit of entomology, looking at a whole mount slide of an earwig. As usual, you can access fully zoomable digital versions of all the slides via the website at downthescope.co.uk. Links to the slide are in the video description. Earwigs are insects characterised by their three body segments, a head, a thorax and an abdomen, as well as six legs. The classic anatomic feature of earwigs are their pincers at the back, also known as cirque. All earwig species belong to the same order, Dermaptera, and there are around 1,800 different species. This particular specimen is probably a European earwig, or Forficula auricularia. The name Dermaptera is derived from two Greek words, derma meaning skin and terra meaning wing, as in pterodactyls. This refers to the thin membranous wings that earwigs have but rarely use. In fact, the English earwig also references their wings. The ear in earwig refers to the shape of the wings rather than the old wives' tale that earwigs can burrow into your brain via the ear to cause insanity. Although there is one anecdotal case of an earwig entering someone's ear, so don't let your guard down totally. Starting at the head, the first thing that strikes you are the relatively vicious looking mouth parts. In general, the earwig uses these to chew up plant material, but the European earwig is also opportunistically predatory, eating aphids and small spiders when they're available. What's really visible on this slide is a fraction of the apparatus that an earwig possesses for chewing up food. So we'll go through what's visible, and then I'll give you some sources if you want to really look at an earwig's face. The two most visible and impressive structures are the mandible and the maxilla. The mandible is the chunkiest of the two and bears three teeth, two near the tip and a third near the base. Between the second and third teeth, there's a hard cutting edge. These teeth and the cutting edge are sclerotized, meaning the cuticle here has been converted to sclerotin, a hard substance. The mandible is attached to the head by a ball and socket joint such that it can only be moved in the horizontal plane. The other large mouth part that we can see is the maxilla. This is made up of five parts. The cardo and stipes are hidden from view within the head. Attached to these structural components there are three appendages. The maxillary palp, the gallii and the licinia. Like the mandible, the Licinia has teeth-like projections and hair-like seta, all pointing towards the mouth. The Licinia works in conjunction with the mandible to chew and crush food, directing it towards the mouth. Meanwhile, the maxillary palps and gallia are filled with chemoreceptors and other sensory organs. These help pick up chemical signals from whatever is being ground up to determine its suitability as food. If you want a very in-depth and dryly scientific blow-by-blow -blow account of what mouth part moves, when and why, then I can point you towards the anatomy in relation to feeding habits of Forficula auricularia and other Dermaptera by Edward J. Popham, an entomologist from the University of Manchester working in the 1950s and 60s who appears to have published extensively on the anatomy of earwigs. Behind the mouth parts, the earwig has a standard compound eye and a head containing a brain and muscles that control the feeding apparatus. Again, Popham's article has some brilliant illustrations of both the central nervous system and the muscles controlling the earwig's mouth parts. The detail and care of the illustrations is phenomenal, and I'd recommend checking out the article for the images, which would have taken hours and hours of careful preparation and examination of specimens to draw. It's incredible to think that housed within the tiny space of an earwig's head, there is such an intricate selection of biological structures coordinating themselves to munch on leaves. So let's move on back to look at some of the other good anatomy that we can see on this slide. It's all fairly bog standard insect anatomy. Three pairs of legs with sensory hairs, 
and hooks at the end attached to a thorax with an abdomen behind. However, here are the wings of an earwig. I must admit, I didn't know that earwigs even had wings until I looked at this slide. I mean, who's ever seen an earwig fly? And I think it's best if we look at a picture of an earwig's wing unfurled, because the smushed and crinkled appearance on the slide does not do them justice. Earwigs are usually reluctant to fly, and those that do can only manage relatively clumsy, short bursts of activity. But the most interesting aspect of the wings is how they fold to fit under their hard coverings, which usually hide them. In fact, the earwig wing represents the most compact wing structure of any insect. This ability to fold and store such a delicate structure, which then unfurls and locks into place without any muscles, has attracted the attention of engineers who want to mimic the origami-like folding of the wings to create items from folding solar panels to pop-up tents. The geometric rules for the folding of an earwig wing were only recently discovered and published in a 2018 paper. I've put a link to the paper in the video description. The basic structure of the earwig wing begins at the wing base. From here, long ribs radiate out to give structural support. Alternating between these long ribs but not attached to the base are short ribs. All of the ribs have a central oval shaped bending point which acts as a hinge. These hinges contain resilin, the same elastic protein that we discussed in relation to flea anatomy and their jumping ability. The paper on folding is full of mathematics and geometry which is beyond me, but the final model they produce appears to fit not only modern earwigs, but also a 280 million year old fossil of an earwig ancestor, suggesting that this unique wing structure has been carefully conserved by evolution over geological time spans. I mentioned that the wing is able to unfurl without any muscle activity. But the next question is, how does the earwig manage to pack its wings away after they finish with their flight? They use the tools available to them, of course, which in this case are the pincers, or more properly termed, the cirque, which menacingly adorn the end of the abdomen. Perhaps the effort of refolding the wings and carefully storing them is why earwigs are so reluctant to fly. Anyway, on to our final anatomical curiosity of the earwig, which are the cirque themselves. The cirque are the earwig's multi-tool. They fulfil a variety of different functions, from folding away their wings to finding a mate. They can be used for defence in a limited way, although the pinch from an earwig is not painful and they lack the muscle mass and cutting edges to inflict much damage. However, females will attempt to guard their young using their pincers, as earwig females are known as some of the insect kingdom's most attentive mothers, exhibiting behaviours such as nesting and regurgitation for their young that we would, we would normally associate with vertebrates. Males also use their cirque to wrestle with each other and command control over territory and other resources, which may be why males have a more curved cirque compared to females. The earwig in this slide is probably a male. But today I'd like to focus on the role that they have in earwig courtship. Earwigs express complex behaviour around mating, with one study noting 16 different male behaviours and 10 female behaviours associated with courtship and mating. Males will initiate courting by waving their pincers, first at no one in particular, but then beginning to direct their behaviour towards the object of their desire. To make his intentions clear, the male earwig then backs up towards the female, waving his pincers in an alluring way. The female can remain stationary to signal interest or retreat, usually followed by a persistent male. A stationary female will provoke the male to display his forceps in new ways, moving them around, raising them up and down, and eventually using them to stroke the female or encircle her gently, eventually directing most of this attention towards the lower abdomen. Although the cirque are extensively used in courtship displays, the male doesn't use them to grasp the female during the act of copulation itself, which occurs pincers to pincers. Instead, the male lies still and doesn't move at all, while the female eats, passes her antennae over objects, or even goes for a little wonder, dragging the male behind her while he patiently goes along with it, in the hope of passing on his genes. So that's a quick review of the interesting aspects of earwig external anatomy that we can see on this slide. If you want to know more, there are direct links to the articles I used as sources in the video description.
If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to find an answer for you. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos on the anatomy and histology of animals. If you want to see slides of tissues from other animals, then you can visit the website. There's a link in the description. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.